has my first plant on the struggle bus. No surprise though because I feel it to me we're just not. Hey everyone welcome or welcome back. So if you're new here my name's Koa and this is Koa's Plant Corner. So today I'm going to be showing you guys a few plants that are currently taking a ride and a long ride on the struggle bus okay. So I do have a lot more plants that could be included in this video but I'm just going to show you four for today. So let's get into it. Oddly enough, I have two philodendrons and two anthuriums. Like, yes, I'm not perfect with anthuriums, but there are some anthuriums that the care isn't quite right, at least, or I haven't made the proper adjustments for it, so that's why they're currently struggling. So let me show you first the philodendron. Okay, so the first plant that is on the struggle bus, and it's been on there since I've gotten it, is my Columbia philodendron SB Columbia. So this is the original leaf that came that it came with. It had three leaves like this, but the other two yellowed and died. This is the OG leaf. This is the second leaf. And I'll just explain the story of this, why this one looks like this. This is what it looks like, but this is this leaf. Super cute and pillowy still. And this is the latest, the second latest leaf here in my care. And this is the newest leaf here. So you would think it's all going well, but it's not, okay? So I had it, it was in soil, transitioned it to pond. The only new roots in here are from this new, this new leaf here. All the other roots rotted. I'm trying to show you guys on camera what it looks like. The rotted roots there, alongside the myco. That root right there is a new root that came from this new leaf here. Yeah, so. It's on the struggle bus because the new leaves that come out are just super bruised. I don't know. It's not like I touched the leaf or anything. Like, it's a philodendron. I thought they were a little bit more hardier than anthurium new leaves. But I think I've, like, touched anthurium new leaves more than this one. And it's still, it still looks pretty bruised. I don't know. It did have thirps a little while back. So it is recovering from that too. Maybe that's why. But this looks like cosmetic damage though, not pest damage. That one. And look at this leaf. The spots on it. Let me know if you guys may know what that is or why it's doing that. I don't know. It was pretty pristine when it first came out. I'm wondering if this is like from inconsistent watering or I don't know. It does have some pest damage on top there between the sinus right there, but the damage that I'm, that I'm like concerned about trying to figure out what, what, it, what it is, what it is, what it is. The damage that I'm trying to figure out what it is is these yellow spots that's happening as well as this. Let me know if the SP Columbia in your care is more of like a, not fragile, but I guess when the new leaves are coming out, you really shouldn't touch it. I mean, I don't have a problem like with that with my Gloriosum. So maybe it's because I never had this plant before and the care is just different for me, but let me know down below. If you have any tips, care tips, let me know. I will be repotting this actually, taking or removing all the dead roots out of there, just having it in, you know, a fresh pond mix. And I will be waiting until that new leaf unfurls as well. This one's kind of weird because I did a plant care guide on it and how I took care of it since I got in it or at the time when I got in it when I at the time when I got it it was fine um it was growing well it had a lot of leaves I have like an idea of what happened let me just show you what it is it's my anthurium my anthurium clarinervium clarinar it's my anthurium clarinervium I think it's getting late so let me show you the oldest leaf that's on it this one a lot of yellowing, a lot of speckling. Before you say it's pest, it's not. I have checked, I have treated this plant numerous times. The old leaf there, uh, the second to old leaf there, you see the little fungal. I think it's fungal the problem, but you see the little crispiness there. Uh, this was the third leaf that's left third to the newest leaf that's left there. Super pretty, but again, the little spot there. This leaf here was a new leaf that just like 
didn't happen. I think I wasn't watering it enough. I think that's why, I don't know. But this leaf, and then the second to newest leaf. Did I try this one already? No, sorry, I didn't, wait, what? Whatever, I think this is the next, <laughs> this is the newest leaf, for sure. So it's pretty right now, but I feel like it's only a matter of time before it starts to get crispy like the other one. So I thought at first it was pest, but I've been treating it and being very on top of checking it and it's not pest. I don't know. I'm thinking that maybe for the Clarinarium is that they want a little bit more airflow to the roots because of how chunky the roots are. I've had this in here for, whew, I want to say a few months. No. Yeah, it's been a few months and I have not seen one new growth, like no, no new root growth at least on the outside of this vessel. Um, beforehand when it was doing well, I shouldn't have moved it, but beforehand when it was doing well, it was in a nursery pot. I know this with the Clarinervium that they don't like to try out and um, I was watering it pretty often. So I said, hey, let me just put it in a no drainage pot and see what happens. So I've been treating it with... Um, Bonite copper fungicide, I believe it's Bonite, and it's still doing it. Like, you know, normally if it's fungal, it'll start to like crisp up and get like, like the yellowing will go away, but you can see still yellowing and maybe I'm drying it out too much, but I don't want to overwater it either. So it's like a weird game that I'm playing with this Clarinarium right now. It has moisture in it. But I'm not even seeing a new root. Like, it's been months. So, I think to fix this, I'm just kind of trying to give some advice to my future self. Um, what I will do is I will actually um, pull it out of here. See if, if there's any root rot. Maybe I let it dry too much then I water it crazily. And then, now there's root rot to it. That's why the leaves are doing this. But, this is the newest leaf. Wouldn't the newest leaf come out a little bit more wonkier? It looks pristine. It looks perfect. So... I don't know, I'm a little bit torn, but it's also growing an inflow. So, okay, we have another, we have another guesstimation. Look, it's growing an inflow. Hopefully you can see that. I don't know if you can. I'm trying to move aside. It's right there. I'm put my nail behind it. It's growing inflow. So maybe, maybe it's acting up because of the inflow. Could be. Will I cut the inflow? Probably not because it would be my first plant to really have a flower. But anyway, second plant is my Anthurium clarinervium. Look at this. It's crazy. I don't know why I'm doing that. Anyway, next plant is a sad one. So I imported this plant from Equigenera. <sighs> yeah, Equigenera. Wanna say two months ago maybe or a month ago so it was a beautiful i have like footage i'll put the footage on top of what i'm talking about right now but it was a beautiful i think it had six or seven leaves that came in pristine shape it the leaves were huge like the largest i've ever seen for this philodendron and i was actually going to film a video of me my importing process but i never bought plants directly from um their live instagram so I, they're live, they're Instagram live, they do Instagram. Am I focus? Am I Kato? This is all very new to me. And of course, I am not a philodendron girly. It's just not my thing. It's not in the cards for me. It probably never will be. Um, but let me just show you what the plan is now. What it looks like now. Guys, it's so sad. <laughs> so, um, I didn't want to show you. I'm a little, I'm a little embarrassed, guys. I'm so sorry. Um, this is what it looks like right now. <laughs> this is what it looks like right now. It's barely hanging on to this one leaf. And I think it's because it has no roots and it refuses to root. I don't know why I have it in this container with, um, a bamboo stick that I had holding this leaf up. But now there's no need for it because there's no roots in it. The stem looks a little bit brown it i had it in moss before and it did nothing but grow mold so now i move it just to plain water i think i have i think it was just plain water and the leaf is still this leaf was green by the way like two weeks ago it's yellow this is the last last leaf 
this have a new leaf coming but I doubt it'll be happy or even unfurl it has the growth point there and the new leaf it's it's sad it's very sad um, there was actually a growth point too on the stem somewhere you can probably see it right there that has gotten all brown and I'm just super close to just cutting all the brown parts off and just leaving the green part but then if I do that I only have one node left so I haven't done it yet but this is what she looks like now that was money down the drain but I'm really I'm really no I'm seriously gonna make an effort to try to rehab it um I did hear from some people on Instagram that they like theirs came unrooted as well I mean unrooted as well and took some time to acclimate and kind of rehab but I have faith in her that she can come back from the almost brink the brink of death that's what she looks like I'm just looking at the uh, like there's no signs of roots nothing I um, cleaned up the chunk the, the stem like I normally do with anthurium see anthurium is just different for me but um yeah this one's another one struggle bus she may be on the struggle bus for a very long time my last resort for this I have two things one I'll let it fruit and perlite so it, I didn't want it to be a semi a semi hydro plant but it may have to be um you know if it starts rooting in perlite maybe I'll pull it out and put it in soil or moss or something but I think if it starts rooting in perlite I'm gonna leave her alone because she refuses to root in just water um and moss I don't know and then two is that I can put a bubbler in here like an airstone bubbler in here I did that for my pastazanum and it still died but people swear by it so I'm gonna try it again I have I gotta find where that stone is but I think I'm gonna put it in put do the airstone method first see if that works and then if not I will go ahead and do the perlite method but the third plant on the struggle bus is my philodendron did I say what it was philodendron patriciae So sad. This one I actually unboxed on YouTube here a few months ago. It was during my plant haul, my first plant haul video or my only plant haul video so far on my channel. It was beautiful. I think before it was an ambient humidity as well from um, the nursery. I think I got it from I got it from Font Animal Plant House. So it came in great shape. It was beautiful. It was fine in my condition. And I think it just started to decline a little bit and let me just show you what it is it's my anthurium magnificum this is my only one i had two but i got rid of one not, not got rid of i actually traded it you know it didn't just die but let me show you the oldest leaves on here first so we have this one okay let's take in the beauty i think it's kind of obvious what this this one is but i have to do some work to fix it there's this leaf here. And then it's kind of, it's big though, it's huge, you know? And then this is the newest leaf here. And like I said on my Instagram, when it comes to growing plants or anthuriums in ambient humidity, I'm always gonna have a hole or two in all my anthuriums, just happens. And it is working on a new leaf. There it is. Yeah, so I have it in this clear pot with slits. Um, I repotted it a few months ago as well. And just like the Clarinervium, I'm seeing no new roots. It was very rooted, it was like root bound, like very root bound when I first got it. I put it straight into this pot because that was the only size that I had available. Um, and since then I did pick up another pot that I could potentially repot it in, but I think with this one it's definitely I know I know what it is it's definitely the watering you can kind of tell with like the crispiness here it's not a fungal issue it's like only on the edges like the, the edges of the plant definitely watering even on this one you can see some cosmetic damage on it but a lot of the crisping is at the perimeter of the plant is that a word perimeter it is a word but is it used correctly don't know um for this one you can see that the crisping is happening where the holes are at of course so yeah this is the newest leaf you can see i think this one is from inconsistent watering um it lives right next to my bedside but yet i still manage to forget to water it it's actually insane 
it should honestly be illegal i don't know what's wrong with me um i did have two more leaves this is what's left of the two og leaves nothing nothing that's one the other one i'm trying to pull off now it won't work okay anyway secondly not only does the water needs to be changed or it needs to be more consistent what the heck are you oh but also the slits i think the slits in this is making the pot dry out way too fast and i'm not able to like water thoroughly either because sometimes the water just pull out of the slits like pour out of the slits and not really get to the bottom of the plant um it's in a cover pot it's in a cash pot pot but still i have to water it pretty often and it's just not working for it so i do think that i need to repot it into a pot without slits and that alone will help with my underwatering problems with it i can tell that's definitely what the problem is underwatering it lives right next to my bed like i don't know why i don't remember to water it or check on it or something it's crazy but yeah that's my last plant for today that's on the struggle bus looking around my room i definitely have some more common plants that are on a struggle bus for me i do have another anthurium that's on a struggle bus actually but i'm not going to mention it now because i'm planning on doing a little bit of a care guide for them in the future but that's it for this video. I hope you guys all enjoyed it. Comment down below some plants that are, are on the struggle bus for you. And maybe we could chat about how these plants are being such jerks for us right now or how we're just not doing our part in caring for them. Um, feel free to check out my last video right here or right here. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.